Hi guys, good to see you in November. This is Oleg, your real estate broker with Winnery Bellevue Commons. This episode is going to be my November market update and we're going to recover all Seattle neighborhoods and all east side locations as well. We're going to be talking about stats, about uh, supply, demand, worries. And at the end of this episode, we're going to be talking about 2023 real estate market predictions. But before we jump into this episode, please consider to subscribe to my YouTube channel as I'm always trying to bring you guys a lot of information that will be helpful to make your financial decisions in the future, regardless if you're buyer or seller. So buckle up and let's begin. I will start with mortgage interest rate. Mortgage interest rate changed a lot. And if you guys remember in October 2021, we had 3.07% mortgage interest rate for three years fixed mortgages. And currently in October 2022, we have 6.95% for same three years fixed mortgages. You guys probably already heard about that Fed's trying to fight with inflation and they increasing for 75 basis points, three months in a row, Fed's rate. And market react to that. Stock market has crashed a lot and mortgage interest rate went up a lot, adjusting to the Fed's rate, inflation and the market. But I'm recording this video mid-November and currently we just received last week new CPI report, come back very positive, 7.7%, better than expected. Stock market is rally for about 10% with a lot of positive news and mortgage interest rate dropped for 0.5%. So currently in the market we have 6.5% mortgage interest rate for 30 years fixed mortgages. But those high mortgage interest rates put a lot of buyers on the fence to buy property, but not everyone. I will tell you guys one story from my work. I have a client right now who was renting in Kirkland that was renting two bedroom condominium for $2,000 a month. And they decided to buy own place in same location. We found two bedroom condominium built in 1991 with a new roof, new parking lot, no special assessments, remodel updated for $340,000. My clients put in 20% down payment to buy this property and mortgage interest rate, including taxes, insurance, a uh, reduce, all combined together going to be about $2,500 a month. The landlord, when they listed before, decided to increase lease for about $100 for them, but instead of signing another lease agreement for another year, they decide to buy own place. And if you guys get three years fixed mortgages and secure the payment for three years, your payment not going to be changed every month like for somebody else. And then on top of that, you have a lot of financial benefits. Now they can write off up to $10,000 property taxes for this unit and write off all interest payment they're going to pay for this property. They've got a lot of tax benefits they did not have before when they were tenants and had a landlord. I'm happy for them. I'm going to give them a key next week and I'm so excited for this family to become homeowners in Washington state. And now let's jump into the market update. This time I'm going to start with east side, all those areas you guys can see on the screen with me. And after we finish with east side, we're going to move to Seattle areas and a lot of cities in this Seattle metro. Seattle side include a lot of different cities, like Bellevue, Kirkland, Redmond, Sammamish, Issaquah, Basel, but we're going to combine them together because we uh, cannot talk about specific neighborhoods. For example, West Bellevue medium sell price $4,050,000 and East Bellevue cross 405 freeway medium sell price $1,000,000. $300,000. We just have to combine together to talk about Bellevue and we're going to do the same thing for all east side cities east from Lake Washington. In Seattle's east side, we have 2.4 months of inventory and medium close sell price is $1,350,000. And first time decrease for 1% year over year. I bring you guys for you on the screen, very interesting slide. And you guys can see for east side, for last three months, August, September, October, price did not change. Flat, $1,350,000. You guys can see how prices increased 
from October 2021 to April 2022 and then went down all the way to August 2022. We see price corrections in sales east side, but we did not see fail anymore. This is very important. And I know a lot of buyers wishing to get even better deal, even better price, continue to wish but probably it's not going to be happen and we'll see what's going to be happen with mortgage interest rate as soon after another cpi report but if another cpi report will come back positive like last one the mortgage interest rate will decrease even more and with decreasing mortgage interest rates buyers power going to be increased and i'm thinking on the east side we're going to see price increase again and this line possibly going to be changed to increase in, in the near future. In October, in the east side, we have 15% homes selling above asking price, 12% at asking price, and almost 50% properties, people have to change price before they was able to sell the home. And you guys can see those people who sold above asking price, sold within four days on the market, and at asking price, five days on the market. That's a very good message for the sellers. If you guys are a seller and thinking to sell property, you need to fit with your price to those four or five days to be on the market to sell house at or above asking price. And if you stay on the market more than 16 days, you are going to be in trouble. You have to reduce price to sell the property. 50% home selling less than 15 days on the market and 14% home selling between 15 to 30 days on the market. If you combine them together, we're going to have about 64%. Um, it's a little bit less than last couple of the months. You guys can see a market, it's slowing down, market doing on corrections, but we right now in normal seasonality expecting to have a less sales and moving to the holidays. In this slide, you guys can see with me together on the screen, medium close sell price, payment and interest rate. It's basically affordability. Show you guys what's affordability with mortgage interest rate and medium close sell price on the market in the east side. You guys can see the price drop from April 2022 for 22%. Uh, drop to $1,350,000 and stays flat for August, September, and October, but mortgage interest rate increase and increase from 5.41% all the way to 6.9% in October. And this makes less affordable properties with rising mortgage payment for the property. And if somebody wants to buy property in east side and put in 20% for down payment, the medium payment going to be right now $8,891 with this high mortgage interest rate. And number of listings sold about asking price lowest in 2022, comparable to last five years. And what this information tells me, tells me to educate sellers. If you're planning to sell the property, very important to think about price. Think twice about price and think twice about condition of your home you're going to be put on the market. If you want to sell your property above asking price or at asking price and features those 12 or 15% in the east side, you have to prepare your property and you have to price correctly. Otherwise, you're going to be fit to those 50% sellers who have to drop the price and keep it housed on the market between 30 to 60 days before they're able to find buyer and sell the property. Think twice about price, what you're going to put on the market, and think twice about condition of your property before you list with real estate broker. And let's talk about Seattle. In Seattle, guys, I will put it on the screen for you guys, uh, Seattle Metro, Seattle area, those neighborhoods we're going to cover today in this episode, and we're going to cover only residential data. So I'll show you guys on the screen this slide. This shows like what the medium close sell price right now. We have $950,000 and increase for 12% year over year. If we compare October 2022 to October 2021, price increase in Seattle for about 12%. Again, a lot of buyers on the fence and thinking prices are going to be go down and a lot of negative news and articles, but what's happening, what's truly happening in the Seattle area, prices went up went up again. And this is very 
interesting. We have about two months of inventory. It's, it's technically we're still in a seller's market and we have like 1041 active listings and about 534 pending sales in Seattle location. And this is very interesting slide for Seattle neighborhoods. You guys can see price adjustment in Seattle happens from January 2022. Price increase a lot from January 2022 to May 2022. Increase from 790,000 to $1,025,000. And was corrected in September to $900,000. But in October, price increased again, an increase for $50,000. And right now, currently $950,000 medium close sell price in Seattle locations. And even with the rising mortgage interest rate, prices went up and people buying homes. I guess probably the best time to buy property was in August and September 2022. But we'll see what's going to be happen next month with mortgage interest rate and supply and demand. But prices went up and mortgage interest rate went up as well. In Seattle neighborhoods, new pending sales down 40% months to date and 29% year to date. 26% of all homes in Seattle area selling above asking price, 22% at asking price, 31% of people have to reduce price before they're able to sell property in the market. And you guys can see those days on the market, 26% uh, homes selling about asking price within six days on the market and sold at asking price within seven days on the market. And people are in trouble when they list property and did not sell first 17 days. And we had 50% of sellers who reduced price before they're able to sell property in October. That's why very important again to price property right and make sure your house is ready for sale to fit to those 26%. If you guys do that, if you're smart, maybe even price with adjustments to the future mortgage interest spikes, that's going to be help you to be in those 26% selling your home above asking price in today's market. If you compare sale area to east side area, sale area much more healthier with the real estate market. And we have 65% home selling less than 15 days on the market and 14% home selling between 15 to 30 days on the market. Combining this together, we have about 70% home selling less than 30 days on the market. I think it's a good real estate market currently in Seattle area and technically it is still seller's market. This slide you guys can see with me together, medium close sell price, payment and interest rate. Let's show you guys affordability. Unfortunately, affordability is decreased with rising mortgage interest rate and increase, increasing medium close sell prices in several neighborhood. And currently you guys can see on this screen, mortgage payment increasing $6,000 a month for the house. If you're going to buy with this medium sell price and this mortgage rates in Seattle right now. In this slide you guys can see if you get like all cities for national data, for housing data, pretty much in all city, if you compare year to date, prices increase. And I'm suspecting uh, we're going to have positive data, positive numbers until, uh, you guys remember in East Side, the price start decreasing in, in April 2022, probably by April 2023, this data will be positive. And starting in April 2023 till August 2023, we're probably gonna start receiving negative data with decreasing price year over year. But we'll see what's going to be happening with supply and demand that time. And probably first time I will put it on the screen for you guys, condominium data for all Seattle locations. Seattle and I can say east side locations as well. And you guys can see with me what's happened on the market, how many days on the market, what medium sell price, where's the highest increase, the less increase. Again, we have east side Bellevue increase 30% year over year and Stewart Park increased 36% year over year. And again, if you cannot buy the property, if you cannot buy a house in Seattle neighborhood, you always can buy condominium or townhouse. Remember that because condominiums increase with the time, same as the houses increase with the time, but they much more affordable. It makes more sense to own real estate and use those tax benefits for yourselves rather than rent from somebody else. Let's talk about what's going to be happening in 2023 in real estate 
market. And I'm going to cover this for case just Seattle and East Side neighborhood. I'm working in this local market for last 22 years. I know my market very well. So I'm going to talk about cell area and East Side locations only. I will put for you guys on the screen prediction from our Windermere economist Matthew Gardner. Many of you guys know Matthew Gardner and you guys can see him on a lot of different channels but he just announced 10 predictions for 2023. And number one predictions what Matthew Gardner did, he says while year-over-year -year prices declining in 2023 are predicted, it's unlikely there will be a systematic drop in the home value. And I think it's really true because supply and demand simply going to work. We don't have a lot of supply right now. You guys can see supply is decreasing and we still, we still have those buyers on the fence to buy property and a lot of people waiting to buy to get more affordable homes. But as soon as property become more affordable, they're going to be jump on this. But a lot of buyers and sellers in defense to each other because sellers not rushing to sell property when the prices declining, they're waiting to good opportunity to sell as well. Second, what he predicted, it rates going to be around 6% in 2023, and by end of 2023, they going to be dropped to high 5%. And I'm agree with that because Fed already told us, even if inflation going to be down and they're going to be fighting inflation, they're going to be keep high rates just to stabilize economy. And if rates are going to be high, mortgage interest rate will continue to be high as well and probably going to be around 6% in 2023. Number three, what he's predict, it's unlikely there will be a significant increase in inventory as many homeowners don't want to lose their low mortgage rates. And I am agree. Like myself, for example, we refinance all houses and we have 2.75% for serious fixed mortgage rates. We have no reason to sell those properties. So we'd rather just keep our investments property, keep renting them for a better future. And a lot of sellers in the same shoes. If they refinance property and bought property like years ago, they sit on a huge equity and they have no reason to sell when prices are going down. Specifically in sale area, where we have over 20% of the old buyers for last 10 years purchase properties for cash. A majority of people who obtain finances, they pay between 20 to 50% down payment to buy their homes. That means they have significant number of equity in the property and they have no reason to sell when prices decreasing. Number four, with supply levels expected to remain well below normal, it's unlikely there will be a buyer's market in 2023, and I'm agree, because supply and demand will work. We do not have enough housing for this demand, and we're going to have less inventory in 2023 on the market. Number five, listing prices are expected to pull back, making accurate pricing more important than ever when selling a home. So I already talked about that, how important to prepare house to sell and how it's important to price right. Number seven is balancing home buyer's cost. It's important to you as well because that's going to lead to less new constructions, less home going to be built in our area and that's going to be balance this real estate market. Number eight, the areas or neighborhoods where the prices went up a lot is going to be decrease more the neighborhood when prices did not increase that much in some neighborhoods. If we compare in Seattle area to east side, east side, in east side, prices increased a lot and they drop a lot right now. But in Seattle area, prices did not increase that much and they're not going to drop as much as in east side. It's in Seattle area, more stable real estate market. Number nine of his predictions, in most markets, prices not going to be increased. Any drop price, will not be enough to make housing more affordable. And number 10 of Matthew Gardner predictions is because we have a high demand from younger generation for housing market, the government have to have adjustments to the land use. And they're going to allow to more density use, they're going to be change zoning, and we're going to live through this in the future when we have to make more available housing market for those younger buyers to satisfy high demand. Hey, thank you so much guys for being with me today. I know it was a very long episode and I covered a lot of different data. Again, please consider to subscribe to my YouTube channel and smash like button and you can share with your friends and family. And if you need any help anytime, 
reach out to me. I would be love to be your real estate resource. With that, guys, have a fantastic week. Until next episode.